All right. Thank you. Architecture and low income or poverty. Yeah, I'm going to point them out to the crowd. So if you look to the slide right now, you can see on the left is a homeless individual. And the environment around him is very rugged, torn down. You can see he does not look very happy at all about his circumstances. And on the right side, you have a more vibrant outlook on life. This person looks like they're happy to be alive. They're enjoying their time on earth. They're happy to see what the next day will behold. And this star contrast is just one of the circumstances that is brought to us because of gentrification. Now, gentrification is the renovation of an area to fit a more middle class standard of life. And so this only holds more issues for those of low income families because they are not able to survive in a specific area. My name is Julian Dixon and my project will focus on architecture and the homeless in, in Louisa County in different areas and how it is able to improve the life of those people. Now take a second to read my code of quality. Now, this quote really resonates with me because I believe not everyone is born into circumstances that best fit their standard of living. For example, somebody who is born into a very rich family will have more opportunities than somebody who's born into poverty or just doesn't have as many opportunities as the other person. Now, helping an individual to reach the same goals that they were meant to be in the first place, just because they aren't having the same opportunities as somebody who's richer than, the, than them, doesn't mean that they shouldn't be able to reach their full potential in life. And so I worked with the Fluvanna Louisa Housing Foundation, and this was my internship opportunity. While there, I mentored with Mr. Dan Burke. And so we'd driven around on the first day to different areas, one of these being the 605 Housing Village. And so this area is a trailer park where the landlords do not take very good care of their clientele. And so one of the issues that we saw was that the skirting for their trailer parks was removed. And during winter time right now, especially with um, planned snow coming for tomorrow, when it's too cold, the water pumps will freeze and they aren't able to get very good water. So think of like the day-to-day -day things you can get, like getting a glass of water or showering. They can take these things like for granted because it's not always available to everyone. Another thing that they work on is, um, that's my mentor, Dan Burke. And so we're standing in front of the Evergreen Place, which is a so solar powered housing unit. It's four quadruplex homes. And so they house four individuals who are able to pay very low rent. When the rent is like really high, it's like only up to $112, which really isn't a lot for just one month for four people. And another thing that they work on are these ramps that they build for people who are disabled. They will move them around all over the county. They have 29 of them that are just shifted depending on the person's needs. They also work on mainly roof repairs where the people can call in, they'll partner with HUD, and so they'll take out a loan and the person is only expected to pay half of the rest of it just for the repairs. They will also meet with their clients to give them more housing if it's not available at the time, like if they can't find like a place to rent out. So I believe that this organization is really helpful to keep people off the streets. And an example of this would be one of the clients we'd met with who was a homeless veteran. And so this individual, I was really glad to see, we'd actually gone into his house, had a tour of it. We were able to see like, um, his kitchen packed with food. I was able to see he was definitely eating well for himself. Um, 
a bathroom, like all the stuff that you just have like day to day, which he didn't have for a very long time. But now he has ready, ready, readily available access to that stuff. So I was re really glad for that. For my research, I focused on gentrification. And as I stated before, this is a before and after image. You can see on the left side where the renovations are occurring, they're building, they're doing all the stuff that they need to. And then on the right, when the construction is actually finished and you're left with the final product. And so I was able to focus on mainly affordable housing and how there's been a decrease of it over the years. Because as you see, like as the housing market evolves, the price of houses is only going to keep on continuing to um, increase. And so my findings concluded that affordable housing not being readily available means that low income individuals will find themselves either displaced because they cannot pay to live in the specific area or the overall social atmosphere changes because it's shifted to a more middle-class standard of living and they don't feel like they can be accepted into that society anymore. And so the overall findings that I thought were the best solutions to um, stop gentrification from harming the low-income population would be to use proffers, which are individuals that will be insensitized by like taxes and stuff, they'll get tax cuts if they will build the same houses, like let's say 50 of them, and about 10 would be set aside for affordable housing where they will cost less, but have the same, um, the, they look the same, the exact same, operate the same as the houses that are at a higher price. And so another area that I focused on at the request of my mentor, was that Louisa will eventually have a, well, maybe have a mega site that will be built around the area. And so it'll encompass the entirety of Louisa. It'll bring jobs to the area. And supporters of the mega site say that this is actually a really good thing for Louisa since it will increase the finances within the county. However, there is an uproar against this mega site and many want to keep Louisa rural and the reason for this is being we're in a very um, rural county where innovations that happen in Fairfax are not always welcome. So it will be interesting to see as this plan will be proposed yet again, if the ruling will still be the same to, to not allow it or if they will change their minds. Now for my community service, like to bring your attention to Lloyd Runnett, who is my mentor. I partnered with him at the Louisa County Resource Council. And so th for my community service, the things that I would do, my experience was mostly spending like the day, like I spent the entire day bagging bags, like all of these three carts here. And I would also be out in the front where I would distribute it to their clients that would come in throughout the day, rotate through and help to deliver them food. And so it was a really uplifting experience, but I wanted to leave my legacy for them. And I decided to make an app and this is just a front page of it. And on Thursday, I went to a board meeting and while there I introduced the app to them, showed them what sort of stuff I wanted to do, which would be client focused. So the clients would be able to go and plan like what day they'd be scheduling a visit, if it would be related to picking up food from the resource council, or if they'd be going to like meet with their um, staff such as Kathy. And so I did think that they liked the app from my feedback that I've gotten. And they said that they will most likely be changing the platform from the app lab to something else more commercial, but I was glad that they were able to at least implement it since, while everyone does not always have afford like affordable housing or access to housing, they will have a phone, so they'll be able to use the app repeatedly. So, for my personal community, for my personal impact, I think that I learned app skills since I was never in the mindset that I'd ever like be learning programming or coding that sort of stuff. And I think my personal communication skills also went up because I'd never yet like sent an email or that sort of stuff. So that was really interesting to learn. My future plans will be attending 
Virginia Tech, hopefully, for architecture. I have yet to hear back about that decision, but I've already heard back from UVA, and they will be my backup. I'd like to thank the BRVGS class of 2019 for being with me through all these four years. I'd like to thank all my friends, my parents, Mrs. King, and each one of my mentors. Are there any questions? They love your yeah. Yeah. Thank you. So in those sorts of areas, like Charlottesville, for example, you'll just be driving to, let's say, like the movie theater, and on the side of the road, you'll see a person standing there with a homeless sign. However, in Louisa, it's not that readily seen. And what I saw like on the graph that he had given me was that it's mostly distributed like even around like Lake Anna. You'll have people that will be living in basements and those sorts of places where you think that they won't actually be. And in school now, I can tell you I haven't really seen like poverty like that blatant in front of me, but it is still there, but we are able to ignore it since we think, oh, it's not really seen all the time here. People don't really talk about it because it's a sensitive subject, but it is still always there. No. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And so be it confidential or not, not releasing names, but um, when I was working with the um, the resource council at the food bank, there were people that would come in like with their problems that you wouldn't believe that they were in these kind of situations because they'd you know, be put into it because they, they lost their job, such as how we talked about during the government shutdown, there were people who had no access to like homes or like they couldn't get any money to actually pay for their rent. So the resource council was there as a backup for them, like with emergency food funds, because if you show up hungry to them, they will always give you food. Thank you.